Okay, hey guys, this tutorial is going to be to walk you through how to install Access to your computers and it will cover both Windows and Mac. So let's just walk through it because for my class you're going to need Access to do the last lab test. And because Access is only run on Windows, Mac users, you have a couple more steps you're going to have to do. Step one. Let's just go through the quick install for Windows because that's the simplest. So for Windows, all you need to do is complete your MS Imagine account setup. Now that's fairly easy. All of you should have gotten um, recently in your FCC email accounts a, an email that will say Fresno City College Business Education. I know there's something longer department and then something here but it basically says web store account information if for some reason you don't see it check your junk mail folder because they were sent now a total of three times so you may see three of these same emails down here okay so step one no matter what you do is you got to get in and complete the setup of this account but in order to do that you have to get this email okay now when you click on this email, you're going to see some information on the side. And you can um, you can click on here to finish your registration process, right? You'll be directed to set up a password and do some other stuff. So that's the process to get on. Now I use this link as well to log on to the system once I've set up my accounts. I've noticed the one that's on the Fresno City site is not correct, so I use this one in here once I set up my account. So now let me take you to the website. Once you log in to the website, the Microsoft Imagine program, now you have access to the software that you can get from Microsoft for free. You can get Windows 10. If you happen to go on and do more programming classes, you can get Visual Studio. You can get, and this is the one we're gonna need you to get, is Microsoft Access, okay? but. Just FYI, if you're using Windows 10, so let's go back to this first as you complete that setup um, step on so that you get into the program. And then you just download Access. Okay, so then in this program you, and I recommend you get the 2016, even though you can see on this screen, you can also get the 2013, doesn't matter, but I think this one is just a better way to go. So. Just FYI, now the way this works, and I've already done it for 2016, so I'll just show you on 2013, is you go through and you add it to the cart. Now, in this case, I happen to be running Mac, so it's giving me a message, right? But that's okay, I can do it anyway. I do, I guess have to log back in though. Must I think they have a pretty quick timeout. So let's see if I can just log back in. There I go. So now I do. Let's see if I have something in my mailbox. I don't. Just do it one more time. And that's the other thing is you can just search here. So that's the 2016 version was the one I already downloaded. But I'm just really showing you here how to download stuff is you add it to your cart. Now you don't have to pay. Let me just read this again because I got this the other day and I was able to get through it. That's okay. Good. There we go. Okay, so now that I'm in here, I can just check out and I'm going to go through a download. Now, this is important to get the download done. It's going to download, thank you, please note, contained access, and now you download the software. Okay? Now, uh, in this case, the older version of access has a little different process, which is part of the reason I also recommending getting the newer version of access because when you download it you get what's called an ISO file okay so let me come back here and just keep us organized so you download access and I recommend the 2016 version because the 2013 is older and it's a little bit of a more process to install and then you just go through and install access into your Windows account Okay, so for Windows users, this is pretty simple. The big deal is just getting into your campus email, finding that email you got from the setup of the Microsoft Imagine, going through the process, and then going through the order process. Okay, so going through the process, setting up the account, going through the order process. All right, now for the students running Mac, if you're running the Mac OS 
then use the step one's the same. Just go through and set up your Imagine program. Now for you, the uh, next step you want to do is m download and install VirtualBox. Okay. Now you can actually do this step as well if you wanted to uh, first, but the rest of the steps I would say do in order. So as an example, if you wanted to set up your Imagine account and then go ahead and download Windows 10, because you're going to need to download Windows 10 first, and we'll show you how to install Windows, and then within that install of Windows, you'll download Access. So, so get a, your account set up, and now do this, and I'll provide links to all this, but you'll go to VirtualBox, and under VirtualBox, this is what you're going to run on your Mac to install Windows, okay? So Mac OS X host, and you just download this and you'll get a, a DMG file. And then once you do that, there'll be another step that you'll go through. Let me just open it to show you here, if I can. Let's see, if, because I already did this on my system. There we go. I'd already done it once, no big deal. But I just wanted to show you, because this is the program that you have to do one more step. Ah, here we go. So now what you do is you double click on this to run the program and then you will find it on your computer and it will be called VirtualBox. Okay? So first you have to set up VirtualBox and or set up the program. Now once the program is installed, then I'm going to go ahead and assume you've double clicked here and now you can find it in your applications. Right? Um, I'll come back to this in a second. Then what you will have when you run it now I already have one set up, but I'm going to walk you through this step. So we haven't installed Windows yet. All we've installed is the program that will let us install Windows. But to do that, we have to do this. We have to have that downloaded pro um, file from the Imagine program. And in this case, you would download Windows 10. Okay, so again, this is for the Mac users. Do this in the, at least the general process that I show. Download Windows 10. Okay, and when you download Windows 10, and this is what I was looking at before, you will get an ISO file. Okay, this will be it right here. Okay, it'll say ISO, and it's important to know where it's located because the next things we're going to do, you're going to need to know that. Okay, just to be clear, do not on the Mac, I'm just saying to you, install Access yet or download it yet. Don't do that until you have Windows up and running. Just makes your life easier. Okay, so once you download that, now by the way, you can put this ISO file on an external disk if you want, and then when you're doing the setup, you just reference it from there. It's really up to you. It is 3 gigs, so it does take up a little bit of space. And you can remove it once you get Windows installed, but sometimes Windows wants you to have it uh, for reference, so you would just need to have that available at some point in the future. Okay, you do get license. For these, uh, and this is not something that runs out after you finish the semester. These are things that you own even after you finish Fresno City. Okay, knowing where that file's at, that's important. So now back to running this. So what you'll do is you'll do a new, and you could get Windows 7, but I recommend getting Windows 10, and you can get a 64 or a 32 bit. Um, it's not make it's not going to make a huge amount of difference, and probably for virtualization, I might run a 32-bit. And uh, I would download that version because you will get an option one way or the other. Um, but you can run either one; doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to do this for demo purposes, just to have a new one because I've already done Windows 10 once. But just this is to show you. The rest of these screens, you pretty much take the default. So I'm going to hit Continue here, and this is going to say how much RAM. So if you find the system is running a little sluggish for what you want, you can increase it. But these defaults are pretty well thought out for most installations. Um, this is going to create a virtual hard disk. It's going to take up 32 gigs of your system. So that's just important to know that it is going to take a part of your hard drive. Okay. And then I just let it do the virtual box image. Uh, it seems to work for most instances. And then I'll let it dynamically allocate. And then I'll just do demo. Oh, I guess I've maybe done that before, but no big deal. And now it's actually going to do file and location. And no. Okay. So this is important. Once you do new, okay, and you set up this for the when you first run it, 
you're going to have to do this ne next step correctly or it will not work. Okay, so this one, this is the one I just set up. I buy new, but now I'm going to start it. When it started, it's going to ask me for that ISO file. So let me show you. I'm going to hit start. And right here, you now have to point it to that ISO file wherever you've downloaded it. Okay, now you can um, do it open here and go browse to find the location. So if it's on a USB, you could see it here. Otherwise, you would find it in your wherever you placed that ISO file that you got from the Imagine, Imagine program. Okay, so I'm not going to do this step because I've already done it. Now, I will say, I'm going to hit cancel here. Don't do that cancel because if you do, you and if you do, no big deal, but let me say it this way. If you do, you're going to have to delete this and start again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that because I've already got one up and running. So once you start that process, then it's just a typical Windows install and it takes about 15 or 20 minutes depending on your computer and you can pretty much take the defaults for everything. The one step where it asks you to set up an account, there's two options and you can either set up an account that is actually your account for the FCC login. You can use that same one or you can set up a local account. I decided to do mine as a local account. Okay, so now and that'll take a few minutes. It'll have to reboot a couple times. But once you're done, then when you um, have it all complete and installed, then what you will see, and this is actually me running Windows in that virtual box environment that I had already set up. Okay, now at this point you're almost there. <laughs> you're almost done with the process. So now that you have on your Mac, right, this um, Windows image and install done, now, and I recommend actually getting Chrome even on, I know this is not pulling the bottom part here, but um, I'm running Microsoft Edge here, which you could do, but I went ahead and got into my campus, 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 campus email, email, and went ahead and went to that. Uh, imagine program again and this time now I would download access into the local virtualized system here okay and then from there it's just a matter of doing the install okay so that's a it, that should be fairly straightforward as far as once you get Windows running on the Mac go into the imagination imagine program okay and then from there and then by the way don't actually purchase the my um, purchase meaning process the software uh, until you're here in Windows. I find that to just be easier. So on the Mac side, don't do this until you actually are running a virtualized version of Windows on your computer. And then you can go through the process of download, uh, going through the cart. Again, again, remember on the software, you're not purchasing anything. You're just getting serial numbers for your software. Okay, and then once you're there, by the way, you also get receipts in your email uh, that will actually give you also the serial numbers, and I believe you get them on the site as well. So again, these are serial numbers you get to keep. So once you've done that piece, then you can install Microsoft Access just by opening up the ISO file, finding the setup, uh, um, setup file, and running setup. You should be fine. All right, I hope that helps you out. Again, the reason I did this, let me go back here and make sure I got everything on the Mac side. So we did that, we downloaded, we set up the OS and virtual box, we started, we find the ISO file, completed the Windows install, set up uh, the account. Right, so this is where we set up the account for Windows. I gave you the two options. We ran Windows from the virtual box, and then inside the Windows download, access from the imagination program. That's what I was doing right there at the end was showing you don't do the walking through the purchase and the install of access until you get the virtualized windows running on your Mac. One thing is that if you happen to have put that and you did purchase that at a different time you can actually um, load your USB on your virtualized system but it does take another step to do that. You have to do what's called a virtualized USB extension pack. I'm just telling you about it. I don't recommend. I actually just recommend getting into Windows, downloading access from inside there. And then last step is just install access. Okay. And again, I recommend the 2016 version versus the 2013 version. Um, 
but you can do whichever one you want but in the 2013 version of access it will be a little more of a challenging install but you can get it done it's just that i'm not going to walk through that because i think you need to get the latest one all right hope that helps you out talk to you later